everyone. It's great to see everyone here. Uh, I invoke the divine light to grace to make heart-to-heart -heart connections. I make true connections when my heart touches another. Right now I'm in the process of listening to the 21, the free 21-day meditation uh, practice with Oprah Winfrey and Deepak Chopra. And it's called Creating Peace from the Inside Out. If you're not listening to it, I highly, highly recommend it. So what I'm speaking on today, I was inspired by listening to these meditations. I was also, of course, inspired by spirit when I volunteered. I was also inspired by my youngest son, Joseph, who kindly had a look over this and asked me some questions to give me a little bit more insight. So thank them all. In this meditation process, Oprah asked, when was the last time you thought about what you really makes you feel good. What fills you up? What brings you a feeling of unshakable peace? I thought these were really excellent questions. And so I invite you now to take a couple of minutes, or a few seconds, to actually think this through and share some of what makes you feel great. So if you just want to take a minute, Sometimes it'll just like pop to your mind so quickly. So for me, when I when I did this, the first thing that comes to my mind is the beach. I love, love the beach. Seeing the ocean and its vastness and its energy, and then you look across there and you see the sky and its vastness. And just knowing that those water and that air, that it's all connected to this whole planet and the vastness of the sky that reaches into like the outer, outer beings and that connects us to the divine, but yet the divine is inside of us. Just as the waters in the sky are there for me to take into my being, I can touch the water and breathe in the air, it's, it's also connected to everybody else. So it's just a sense of connectedness, but with it all also being there. It makes me feel really small but yet it also makes me feel really large at the same time. So insignificant, like one of the grains of sand on the beach, yet so significant that I'm part of this mighty plan of being. Being one person, yet being one with all of it, like with oceans and the air. It's a really magical feeling for me, and it just kind of opens my heart up, and it just makes me feel wonderful. Does anybody else have some thoughts that they would like to share about what takes them to their happy place? Chris? My happy place is a meadow full of flowers, a stream, and mountains in the background. And we have camped in an area of that uh, when we were in California. And it's not the same, but it's similar. Mm -hmm. um, but the colors there are very um, bold and soft at the same time. So that's my happy It just makes you feel that's, that connection it opens your heart. That's great. Does anybody else want to share any of their? OK, moving right along. <laughs> Most of us love our family and love the connection that we share with them. They can delight and infuriate us. But yet, either way, we love them to the core. There's a deep, deep love that family teaches you and a deep, deep connection. And that's that heart space connection. Meditating and connecting with spirit, bringing spirit into your heart, emerging that divine connection, that's bliss. Allowing this connection to grow and grow from this connection Listening to the divine guidance and feeling your heart fill with divine love, the more your heart, your being fills with this love from spirit, the more you walk in the grace of love and shine your light, sharing it with others. This is how we lift ourselves up and in turn we lift up others. This is the kindness that we see people sharing with each other, helping loved ones, helping complete strangers, helping out various organizations that are reaching out to help others. And we're seeing so much of this right now and at this, you know, this hard time of COVID that we're going through. We're seeing so many beautiful 
outpourings of help just to complete strangers and people just wanting to help humanity. And I think that's been one of the beauties of this time. And this love, this is a really basic lesson in life, is to love. To love as much as you are capable of, and then a bit more. And the more you connect with spirit and fill up your cup, the more you can share it with others. And that's what I found here at the Spiritualist Church. People who had that joy and that spark and that connection to spirit and were willing to then share that with me and help me to grow and how to better connect with spirit, which has helped me to grow in so many ways. And I have to say, I have leaned heavily on that um, connection of love and spirit to support me and my family and my friends, especially during these 2020 times. Also, getting the messages from loved ones, so being able to, to hear spirit, and some of us can hear spirit, and some of us have to rely on our message managers, but to be able to get that, knowing that we have those loved ones around us that are always there for us, looking after us and loving on us. Life gets busy. Life can get very busy. It's easy to get caught up in the distractions of the world, listening to media and the craziness that's all around. Meaningful things happen when you give people your undivided attention. Most of us dash about doing a few things at once. Hands up, we're very guilty. <laughs> when driving or doing something on our computer and we're talking to someone on the phone at the same time, we're surprised that you can't remember half of what they said. And then your brain doesn't really multitask, you know that. Your brain has to switch back and forth, back and forth. That's just science. So it's not a surprise that you can't really connect with people when you're trying to switch back and forth between what you're doing and you're listening because you don't have that chance to really sink into your heart and connect with that, that heart connection with the person. To truly connect on a heart level and not just a mental or an emotional level. And yes, you can connect on an emotional level without really sinking into your heart space. Think of a time, it's been a while I know, but think of a time when you were face to face and in an uninterrupted conversation with someone that you really did make that heart-to-heart -heart connection with. You truly felt connected with what they were feeling as well as what they were saying. Whether they were telling you about something that was really important in their life, like maybe something that happened at work or an event, something that was sad, sharing their joy or, or about something or someone. There is a real intensity when you actually sit and listen with that undivided attention. That's the difference between being connected and engaged and just casually listening. This makes for such a richer friendship and it enhances your own feelings and connections, not just with them, but with spirit as well. So you think, okay, well, what can I do to limit those distractions for me and for those I love? And keeping those heart-to-heart -heart connections with loved ones can be challenging. There's obstacles. Lack of self-awareness. Having no meal time, or having meal times, it's a no phone zone and no TV. Actually sitting and looking at the person when they are speaking. Not kind of listening and noticing other things that need to be done or kind of spacing out and thinking about, oh yeah, I need to do such and such. But truly, truly being there. And I can tell you from my own experience, I truly wish that I had sat there with the one-on-one -on -one with my children more truly tuned in rather than cooking at the same time or doing other things. Because I look back and I really cherish those times of undivided attention. In the Reverend Marilyn Autry's book, The River of Life, which explains the laws of spiritualism, um, it's a very interesting book and it's available in our bookstore if you're interested. But I'm going to talk about the law of responsibility, which states that although we are interrelated, each individual is accountable for his own conduct and obligations. It is your responsibility to do what must be done in order to raise your level of consciousness. As we state in the principles that we just spoke of, we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. I believe all this ties in. By allowing spirit to grow in our heart, connecting to the love of spirit, we are creating our own happiness. And the more we create our own happiness, the more we shine and want to share it with others. And others see the light within and are attracted to it. And then they want to learn more about this upbeat vibe. 
And that is actually what it is. It is an upbeat vibration because the more you are raising your consciousness, the more you're raising your vibration level and the, the closer you are in partnership with the divine. So problem solving need problems problem solving focus needs to be bringing in the light, not trying to conquer the darkness. And that's a quote from Deepak Chopra. And I'll try and repeat that. Problem solving focus needs to be bringing in the light, not trying to conquer the darkness. Because you don't conquer darkness by more darkness, it's only by bringing in the light does darkness disappear. To be in the light, you must consciously be consciously aware of what is actually happening and bringing light into yourself. So things you can do, you can set an intention to allow the light in, the here I am, the surrender, the allow connection with your consciousness into the light. Light can be the divine, spirit, and the light of love. Recognize when consciousness is occurring. Know this feeling and this space so you can come back to it often throughout the day. It is your little sacred, sacred space, your little place of respite. Experience the light. We've all felt that special feeling of closeness, security, peace, sense of being cherished, loving kindness, and knowledge that we, we belong. Heart to heart is living in the light without fear. We radiate what we are inside to the outside. The light of awareness makes this all possible. Know that you can create positive change in your relationships. Consciously communicate with another person. And when you speak, ask the old ones, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Take full responsibility of your actions and how they will affect another. Buddha talks about right thought, right speech, and right action. And the rightness comes from the level of being our true self. Relationships shift by using these guidelines. The messages that you send to other people through your thoughts and words and deeds is, I care, I'm listening, you matter, and I want only good for you. And that's really what people want, isn't it? Do you know if people want to know that they're valued? People want to be heard and loved. Can you think of anyone who doesn't want that? And as you spread this love, people want to know more. You spread your knowledge and explain how they too can grow in love and peace by learning how to connect with spirit. Once they know how to connect with spirit, spirit can then teach them their lessons in love and connection. And what if your friends and family connect to the, to the light differently than you do? Fine. It's useful to discuss and the differences and see what you can learn from each other. Be open. And if you're both connected to the light, but in different ways, does it matter? Let the differences not come between you, but let that shared connection join you. How do you eat an elephant? I think most of us have heard that expression. The answer is one bite at a time. Thankfully, it's a metaphor because the actual thought of it was quite revolting. Um, however, it is a good example of how to tackle things a little bit at a time. And that's true about the negativity that's in our world right now. By walking more in spirit and connecting daily, filling your heart and sharing that with others, they doing the same. And that's how we bring more light into the world. How we focus on the light rather than trying to conquer the darkness. Darkness cannot live in light. Let us be the bringers of light. Start by strengthening your own connections with spirit. Start by being kind and sharing love and respect for others. This is how you, your one little spark, helps to change the world. What if the people you're trying to share the light with aren't really interested? It happens. Even some of them scoff at the idea of such nonsense. We've probably all heard that, especially if you have teenagers. <laughs> it's okay. Love them anyway. Don't judge. And don't belittle them for not knowing any better than the darkness. Just love them and send them light. How did you ask? Ask the angels to speak with their angels for them to allow the light in. Ask spirit to hold them in light around them so that they may actually start to feel it. And like we did previous to this service, send healing energy to them. That is so powerful. 
Again, remember, your mission is not to conquer the dark, but rather be the bringer of light. Not everybody is ready. You cannot change a person. That's a good one to remember. Only spirit can. And the biggest part is, they have to be willing to allow the light in and ready for the change. And that's not in your control. And it's really useful for you to remember that for your own peace as well as theirs. And just love them anyway. And the same goes for people who think your happy demeanor is just fake. Be understanding of them. As if they haven't felt that peace and that connection, it's really hard for them to get it, to understand it. Just send them healing and peace. No arguments, because what's there to prove that your undisturbed peace wouldn't already be the example of? And what about for yourself? Is it a case of once you connect with spirit and light, you just stay there blissful? I wish the answer was yes. It's hard enough to capture that little space long enough in meditation. But that's not always the case. Sometimes life deals things to you that challenges your beliefs and your connection and darkness starts to creep in. Go back to step one. Meditate, which is listening, and pray, asking. Open yourself to the connection of the divine and be held and supported there. Life will bring you lessons. And not all of them are pleasant. You can try to fight them on your own, but I can tell you from personal experience, it's really not such a good idea. Because it is you end up feeling lonely, disconnected, and empty. Or you can go back to source and connect and fill up and get that comfort and that strength of the Holy Spirit and bring that into you. Ask for understanding of what's going on and guidance on how to best deal with it. How to ride out this wave, because we all have waves in our lives. And remember, you are never alone. The divine your loved ones, your spirit guides, and your angels are always in and around you, loving on you. Feel into that space. Feel into that love that surrounds you. It's so beautiful. And then just really try to connect with that heart to heart. You might still be going through the same way, but you will go through it with more peace and grace. Does being connected to spirit Living in your heart space mean you become a perfect person? I wish. You're still human. You'll still make poor choices. You'll still do things that disappoint yourself. But forgive yourself easily and gently. Be as kind and as gentle to yourself, your own inner being, as you would to others. Most of us are so unkind to ourselves in the way we talk to ourselves. We would not tolerate anybody else talking to us that way. So why? Why are we so harsh on ourselves? Stop it. It's up to you. You're the only one that can stop that chatter. So just stop it and be kind and gentle. Speak to yourself as a loving parent would or as a God would. Your human mistakes and times of poor judgment are inevitable. Instead of berating yourself, ask, how could I have handled that better? What have I learned from this? What do I want to change for the future? This is how we grow. Ask for forgiveness from the divine. Ask for pardon and learning. And in the process, if we may have hurt another, send them prayers of apology and, and then just release it. Don't keep beating yourself up about it. Have you ever heard of the Hawaiian prayer of forgiveness? The Hopo Ono Pono prayer goes like this. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. That's it. That's the prayer. Part of the reason why this traditional Hawaiian forgiveness prayer is so powerful is that it first requires you to acknowledge the wrong that was done by saying you're sorry. Acknowledging this and changing your actions accordingly is what helps you to grow into a better person. The Indian parable of the grandfather telling the grandson that we all have two wolves inside of us that battle, the dark one and the light one. The dark one is evil, 
It's anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, grief, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other one is good. It's joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it and asked, so which one wins? And the grandfather replied, the one you feed. So choose to feed the good one, connect to spirit, and enhance the good feelings, and then share them. Have any of you had the opportunity to see the Christmas commercial? It's just out recently. And there's a little girl, and she's trying to flip on the switch for the electricity for a city. I'm seeing a lot of blank faces. OK. <laughs> I'll give you, the, I'll give you a, a Reader's Digest version of it. So she's there, and she's trying to switch on the, the help to switch on the electricity for the city, for the gentleman that's up putting the lights on the tree. And it's nothing is lighting up. It's not working. And then she just flips the switch, and she's kind of like transported into this switch works magical central area. And then the engineer's there, show her all these groovy switches and things that are there. And then they teach her that the true spark the spark of hope of light is within her. And then she goes back to her town and she flips it on again and it's still not working. I thought it was going to work, didn't <laughs> um, She then climbs the ladder and places her hand on her heart and then she touches the star. And the tree lights up and then the, you know, the star lights up, the rest of the tree lights up and then the whole town starts to light up and you just see everyone kind of each other kind of magically. It's a beautiful commercial, um, and it's not one to fast forward to when you're watching TV. I think it's the Chick-fil-A commercial, but you know, sometimes the commercials are so moving you kind of forget what the product is. Um, but you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> Let us remember that by connecting to the divine increases the spark of light we each have within of us. And by reaching out and connecting to others, we share that light that love, and that we help to light up our own town, and our own community, and our own, and the world, and the worlds of others. Each person loves to be connected with that spark of light. Now think of how beautiful this thought is, that each person would just like light up the next person, the next person, I you know, if you remember way back when they used to have those commercials with everybody, I think it was Coke with the, everybody holding hands around the world, and, and just think if we actually could still do that. And, you know, just, it's a beautiful thought to keep in mind. So, even if we feel insignificant as one, like one person, what can I do? Even if we feel like that little grain of sand on the beach, just remember that we are very powerful. That our one little movement really can make a difference. What it is we do. It affects the whole collective. And be the change, the change that you want to see in the world. Pray, meditate, plug in, connect to the divine, and share your heart-to-heart -heart connections with people so that you can be that spark of change. And you'll think about it when you see that commercial. Be love. Love people anyways. Choose to walk in peace as much as possible. And sometimes that's very challenging, especially this year it's been particularly challenging. Remember the words of Buddha on how your words speak and what they can do. I care, I'm listening to you, you matter, and I only want good for you. We are all of value, even those that we really question. <laughs> and this year we've had some special questions. Perhaps their value is to teach us lessons about how not to treat others. We do have the choice of how we feed ourselves. And do we want to feed the good side? So keep it simple. Meditate, pray, connect with spirit, fill yourself up with that love. Share that love in that heart-to-heart -heart connection with others. Send that love to all others through healing prayer. Live in love and light and be the change. And you will feel the wonderful change it makes in you. It's a present to yourself and to the others to be present. Enjoy.